with Hedera, I can see it happening within uh, three to five years where, where you start seeing all these enterprise real world applications launching on Hedera. And with What's up world and welcome to another episode of the Super Investor Show, where if you're like me, an investor who knows it's good to learn from your own mistakes, but it's better to learn from others, well, who better than some of the smartest, wealthiest minds in the space. And today we have a community very close to my heart and that's the H Barbarians. Now we've ran through some of the great minds in the space already, but the list is long. And today we have a man which you won't recognize, but you will if you're on Twitter. He goes by HBAR to the moon. However, today you're going to get to know the man behind the profile and more importantly, what he's building in this space. So please help me welcome up the founder of the Citadel Wallet, which you may or may not have heard of, but by the end of today, you sure will. So welcome on stage, Andy. Hey, Jordan. Uh, great to be here. Thanks a lot for inviting Really excited to have this conversation with you and let people know more about myself and what uh, what else I've been doing in my personal life. Personal. And I, I start with personal because you're a real person. <laughs> 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 which, you know, we sometimes forget behind these accounts, which appear, you know, godlike with these big followings. Um, we never see the face of the name. We never know truly why or how. But, and you have to start off with you first and foremost. Um, who are you and how would you define yourself? Yeah, so um, in, in training, I'm a hardware engineer, electrical engineer. I have graduated um, in 2016, 17 and started my career. It's been about six to seven years already. I've been working in the field, uh, developing uh, applications, uh, developing embedded systems for all kinds of different applications, uh, ranging from avionic industry, military industry, or automotive industry. Uh, so that's what I've been doing last six to seven years. And then along the way around 2018, I got really interested into in crypto. Uh, at the time, Bitcoin and Ethereum were some of the most prominent uh, blockchain networks. Uh, the technology seemed very interesting to me. So I decided to dive into it and do some research, try to understand it. Also having that engineering background I was just really interested in the technology of all of this and how it's going to be useful in real life and solve uh, some problems in the real world. And that's got how I also got involved uh, with, uh, with crypto as well and then learned about Hedera and the rest is the history. But I'm an engineer in training. I have a kind of a very creative mind. I always try to look for the next and most interesting thing in the horizon. And crypto seems like that next big thing. And I'm really excited to be here. Uh, but I, I truly enjoy crypto, being in crypto. But I also en enjoy my personal career uh, in engineering, building things. And that's one of the reasons that I have decided to also build something special for uh, this industry, that being the hardware world. We can talk about that later. But that's kind of in short about me and uh, my background. And Andy, I think that's the first question everyone would ask, right? And we said this off air as well, which was why you, why a wallet? And I personally feel like you've addressed that concern straight away. Um, and I'm sure there's a bunch of other questions which people now have, um, yeah. but everyone knows where to find you. So that's not going to be a problem. <laughs> yeah. um, but I do have a question though, Andy, because you've been in crypto for some time, you know, so I tip my hat to you, sir. Um, as you said, um, many fantastic wins and hey, many learning lessons. Why now though to build a wallet? Yeah, that, that's that's an interesting question. The timing is uh, seems to be perfect to me. Uh, when I just got involved with crypto and started supporting Hedera because I saw how important this technology is and what kind of impact it can have in the world, not just as a cryptocurrency, but it can become that trust layer of the internet which has been missing from the internet right from the beginning. They, it seemed to me this is the missing piece 
to the internet that is very important to provide that ownership uh, to people. Uh, so initially, I was just a supporter, right? Believing in the mission, believing in in this idea and the fundamentals of the technology being ready for this kind mm -hmm. of for becoming that network for the internet. There have been uh, there are a lot of other networks out there which, in my uh, personal opinion, lack the technology part. They have the ideolo uh, ideology, uh, they have the the strong people behind them, but the technology itself is lacking. Uh, some fundamental strengths to be able to really bring that trust layer to the internet and scale um, uh, to the world. There is billions of users uh, every day using the, the internet and all kinds of applications built on it. Uh, so I, I, I wanted to uh, get involved and build something that is going to help people mm -hmm. eventually. Uh, initially, that wasn't the plan. Initially, it was more spread the word about Hedera. Uh, but as an engineer, as a creator, I did want to build something that is going to be useful. And uh, two to three years into Hedera, supporting Hedera and being in the ecosystem, and also uh, using other hardware wallets and realizing there is a lot of limitations to these hardware wallets. And there is a real problem that can be solved and addressed. Having that background, it just seemed the natural fit for myself to build a hardware related device. And it just seemed like the perfect fit for me being in crypto, being interested in crypto, and also having that experience and background in engineering. I can build, I have been building devices like this and even more complex devices uh, for years. It just felt, uh, seemed like the natural fit and I decided to dive into it. And then last couple of years, I would say uh, last year or so, uh, Hedera community has been growing really fast. Yeah. And there is a lot of new users that are coming on board. There's a lot of new dApps in DeFi, NFTs, and gaming that are coming on board. And I see a lot of people talking about the need for a secure device to protect their keys all the time, especially with Hedera network, it being so flexible and versatile and mm. people having so many different things, uh, ability to do so many different things with the network. They want to use the network on a daily basis yeah. and be able to interact with the net network in a secure way. Hardware wallets today are not ready for those kinds of use cases. They're just for storing crypto and sending crypto, which is very limited. And understandably, the industry is still new. A lot of these companies haven't figured out that there is a need for a broader uh, feature set uh, for these wallets. I decided to be the one who will start uh, doing that. And um, I think it's the right time also to build this wallet and get it to the community. Right timing is a difficult question to answer. And you did a fantastic job of that, Andy. Um, the old saying is the perfect time to plant a tree was 10 years ago and today. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so I'm glad, hey, you, you, how long have you actually been building for them? I'm asking. Uh, so I started actively building, uh, six to eight months ago. Uh, it was around August of last year Yeah. when I started really spending a lot of time building it, but the, it was an idea, uh, long before that I was doing a lot of research into okay. hardware wallets in the overall industry, trying to understand, uh, what kind of components, uh, electronic components, these companies are using to, to build these wallets, what kind of architectures they're using to make sure that the wallet is as secure as possible. And then doing the research, gaining that understanding about these devices. Again, this is a new industry and a lot of these companies are still, even though there is some popular ones, they're still in experimentation stage. Uh, there is no standard uh, for the hardware wallet industry for security. So everybody's just trying to make uh, their wallet as secure as possible, but but there is no regulations or standards they need to at least meet or exceed. Uh, so yeah, that that, that that's why I, I decided to <laughs> build my own, and it 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 needed to take that much I believe uh, that much time I believe uh, to really understand the wallet and then feeling confident that I can now, I do have enough information now about the industry, about all the secure elements and secure uh, microprocessor and all, all 
those types of devices available in the market, what are the most cutting edge ones I can utilize to bring this hardware wallet to even a higher level of security than what's available in the market. And mm -hmm. I really dived into it six to eight months ago, and we have made a lot of progress. Brilliant. Well, we'll be supporting from afar and up close with all of that, Andy. Um, however, you know, coming on the show, we always delve a little bit deeper into the people building, you know, who is that person? Um, because although we're talking present day and of course, what your future plans are with the Citadel wallet, we also want to know what is your strength and what's your weakness? So if you're happy, we're going to transition now into the juicy part of the show, mm -hmm. which is um, we're going to start with your superpower. So as an investor, so we'll put your investing hat back on just for a second. And you could say, yeah, you've invested into, of course, building your own business, building your own wallet. What would you say is your superpower? Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, the superpower, it's really hard to just pinpoint to one specific thing that you're strong at. And cool. I, I would actually argue that a lot of people who are successful in their investments or they're considered these successful big names in, in, in investing, they don't even really exactly know what their superpowers are. It's it's a constant struggle looking for all kinds of different projects and not all projects you invest into are going to be successful, but the ones that are successful will put you on the map as the, as the strong investor. I would say for me personally, a superpower is caring for the product and utility of the project more than the stock the price of the stock or the price of the cryptocurrency uh, or the logo or the brand uh, i really pay attention to the value this company or this project or this network is going to bring to the world and the problems actual real world problems they're going to solve and that has been my focus right from the beginning even before i uh, found hedera i was lucky to uh, find Hedera really early on when all of the crypto craziness was going on because at the beginning when I was starting to invest uh, into Bitcoin, Ethereum and other networks, I, I hit, hit that hesitance. That there's something missing here. Um, I look at the, the project white papers and websites, everything looks nice and promising. But when you start digging into this networks, the technology, the fundamentals, you quickly realize there is a lot of limitations. There is a lot of problems, but uh, that these networks don't even talk about. Um, they pretend to be decentralized, but when you really look under the hood, uh, looks like there is just few people controlling the whole network. Uh, there is few mining pools controlling the network. There is few developers making all the decisions where the network needs to go, and those things. Uh, uh, and uh, from for someone else in crypto industry who doesn't do this research and looks at the community and the shiny things about the network and all the money that they pour into marketing, uh, they might think this is a good investment. There is a lot of uh, force behind it. And in the short term, it might be a good investment. But I personally look for the value and utility and for the long term. I'm not really interested in the price of the a coin or the stock in the short term, especially for startups, you can't really give value to the network when it's been around for just two, three years. And none of these networks in top 100 have really brought any real value to the world. And it's all going to be sub subjective at this point. You can't really compare and say this market, this coin has this market cap, it's undervalued compared to this other market cap, right? Uh, it's all subjective uh, that the ones that have higher market caps doesn't mean they have that much value. So people need to be really careful about uh, analyzing those kinds of things. And my, again, my superpower uh, that I think is the most valuable for me is to pay attention to the, the real world problems that the network is going to solve and are the fundamentals there to be able to deliver on those promises a lot to unpack there a lot 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 to unpack there but for good reason Andy, like you say it's and you can hear 
your lessons, even without saying it, that you've learned along the way, you know, in the past as well, I used to look at market cap, right? And then all the calculations that you could do, couldn't you, Andy, where you say, if HBAR has this market cap, it will be this price. But at the same time, we have to understand, well, right now in the space, I'd love to know if you agree or disagree with this, Andy, we're voting with our cash. Right now, we're saying, I think this is going to win, so I'm going to put my cash over here. Mm -hmm. And that's what, for many, not all, is deciding the current value. How far out do you feel we are from seeing um, the true stock market price, as you mentioned? And we're talking specifically with yeah. Dera. Yeah, the, the true value of the network will come when you see people actually using the network, yeah. uh, when when it's utilized. The, uh, until that point, it's all just guess guessing. Uh, Nobody can really uh, give value to these networks and be accurate because they're not doing anything. It's just uh, at this stage, it's really just people rallying around these networks. And because these are public and open networks, people uh, and people invest into them so they have skin in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, they feel the need to promote them and talk about them. So you, you see these communities being formed because the, of the nature of these decentralized networks. Uh, but real value, it's, it's really hard at this point to really, uh, really um, guess when uh, these networks will start va being valued as uh, the real value they bring to the world. With Hedera, I can see it happening within uh, three to five years. Where where you start seeing all these enterprise real world applications launching on Hedera. And we've seen a few of them already launching uh, where they drive large TPS on the network and doing uh, things like supply chain, tracking real world products. And mm -hmm. that's a real solution, uh, uh, solving a lot of problems for these large companies and bringing a lot of efficiencies to these companies because now you have a single source of truth uh, mm -hmm. that companies and everybody else who are interested in that product, they can tap into that single source of truth and synchronize everything among them. And that's going to save them money, save them time, uh, bring efficiencies to their uh, companies and their businesses. And that's that will turn into real value uh, reflected in the value of the network. That's just one of the use cases. You will have games. Uh, TPS is not just the, the only way to represent value on the network. Uh, people are going to uh, tokenize real world assets, uh, mm -hmm. real estate, secure, uh, sec all kinds of securities, stocks, bonds, uh, stable coins. Uh, uh, fiat is being moved, digitized and moved onto these networks. And there's going to be trillions of dollars of value tokenized on Hedera network and you will start seeing that reflected in the market cap of the network itself because people who put that much value on the network tokenize on the network they will be interested in the success of that network because if that network goes down then all their assets represented on that network will be affected and those uh, uh, projects or companies will be uh, harmed by the the network going down uh, so yeah, uh, three to five years, I would say, we'll start seeing some of the good projects, uh, market caps to actually show the value that they deserve. Uh, but most of the projects don't have uh, that have this high market caps mm -hmm. today. Most networks don't really have that value and haven't done anything in, in the world. It's just speculation. It's just trading their uh, coins. And a lot of yeah. them will <laughs> go away, sadly. And I used to, at least early, early on, you know, I haven't been in the space as long as you, but, you know, at least three years ago, I'm like, ah, oh, it takes so long. And especially during that period, right, because we had, of course, the pandemic, there's a lot of uh, circulate, circulating free cash, right? A lot of people from yep. all different governments were given money and they were able to sit at home and speculate even more <laughs> into um, what could take them out of their situation, right? And so for many people who probably got in during the pandemic, they experienced, myself included, a kind of false reality of what this market usually operates as. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think you may agree with me here, Andy, we've definitely seen a call off now, right? And so when people hear three to five years, I'm pretty sure most people are like, oh, and for me, that excites me because <laughs> it's like, yeah, three to five years. Now I don't have to panic that, you know, I have to get it all yeah. filled up tomorrow. It's like, wow. And in yeah. three to five years, correct me if I'm wrong, Andy, it doesn't stop there, correct? No, it doesn't. <laughs> this is just the beginning. I mean, if, if, if it stopped there, then none of us would be in this industry. This is just way bigger than uh, what we even imagine. The, the numbers of use cases, the, the implications, this kind of technologies are going to have in the future in all industries. Uh, right now, crypto is very siloed, which is going kind of against the, the, the crypto philosophy. It should be open and transparent and um, bring in everybody from all industries. But it, it's become the thing that it was uh, uh, scared of the most, which is siloed, closed ecosystem of just a very closed minded people thinking if you're on our side, you're with us. If you're, if you have ideas that are a little bit against our ideas, then we're going to shut you down. It, it, it's become in a lot of cases, it has become a little bit toxic. It comes from the, the, uh, the, the, the this industries are very money focused mm -hmm. and fin it's a financial uh, network infrastructure. So there is a lot of uh, people just being interested in making money and not really being here for bringing any additional value, anything else to the table. But for me personally, I see this industry uh, scaling to uh, this industry is be, uh, going to become part of all other industries. This is uh, similar to Internet. Internet is not its own industry. It's more of a network in a platform that all other industries can benefit from and imagine in 10 15 years when every single uh, application every single company and business is utilizing this public networks um it's, ju it's just going to um, scale in an unlimited way and it's not just that the transactions the use cases on the network are not just going to come from people sending crypto on the network, that's going to be a very small uh, usage of a small portion of the usage of the network. There's going to be billions of IoT devices using the network, automated uh, messaging between each other or with the uh, cloud that they're sending the data to analyze and process. And all of those uh, transactions are going to flow through public decentralized ledger networks to provide the proof of this uh, messages to secure these IoT devices. I, I, I can go on and on, uh, talk about all kinds of, uh, the, 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 the potential is really unlimited yeah. uh, with this network, especially Hedera. And that, that's what uh, makes me really excited every time I think about the future and what the possibilities are. And I do want to be involved, uh, not just as a community member, and a supporter or an influencer, uh, that's the re that's one of the reasons I so seeing all the value that, that is possible to bring through these networks. I decided to also build uh, applications, hopefully multiple applications in the future, but starting strong with the with the hardware wallet. It's a great place to start. And for anyone who maybe had some misconceptions about you, Andy, right? That one h bar to the moon it's the most um surface level statement <laughs> and that, that would go all along exactly as clear as possible what this account is for it's not a personal account it's not my personal opinion i mean there is some personal opinions but i try to uh, provide as many facts as many mm -hmm. news and insights as possible sometimes the personal gets involved in your personal opinion and getting frustrated with some of the things that are going on. But on the high level, you exactly um, said what, what the account is for. On, the name of the account already says what it's for, and nobody can expect anything else from that account. So expectations are right there in the name of the account itself. However, what I want to caveat it with was you don't match the connotations attached to HBOT to the moon. Because no. When someone, you know, you think of someone who says X token to the moon, 
you think degenerate. That's usually what follows, yeah. right? Um, you think someone, of course, who is just focused on price, who wants immediate gratification. But here you are. And the, the two don't match up, Andy, in a good way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Know. Well, you know, someone who would be attracted by that saying, oh, yeah, we're going up, we're going up. And then they come to your page and they listen to your interview and they hear how you talk. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm actually learning stuff here. Right? And that's what's so beautiful and so uh, fascinating about you, which is you understand what the audience you understand their language mm -hmm. but at yeah. the same time you provide them with the information they need maybe not the information they want but the information they need so you know keep up the good work there bud yeah and also just to add to that uh the name ishwar to the moon has completely different meaning to me yeah the, i mean in crypto industry people uh think of the prices of the coin yes. right this yes. is it's the price that matters if it doesn't shoot up a thousand times, then it's a failed project. Yeah. To me, the moon represents more lo long-term vision of the project, what the possibilities are reaching and really disrupting uh, uh, certain industries. And I think most of the industries are going to be disrupted by Hedera. And it, it it's more of a symbolic uh, thing, a part to the moon, that, that far-reaching goal that you hope to get there and it's going to take a long time to get there, but you know uh, the, the potential and strengths of this network and that, that's what you're shooting for. Price, uh, 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 from the surface, it does look like um, I'm all about the price of the mm -hmm. issue. But like you're saying, if, if people see that and start following me and start, start reading my content, they quickly realize there is no conversation about the price of the issue bar. Sometimes I do post about the price whenever some exciting things happen in in the community, but most of the time I never talk about the price. I never talk. I never make any predictions within this much time. The price is going to be this mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. people who make uh, predictions. I mean, I, I don't want to disrespect anyone. It, it's all just guesses. It, it, you, 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 and I don't want to give people hopes about uh, the prices because i know what kind of network hedera is the network itself is not hyping its coins price it's not uh, putting a lot of money into marketing the coin itself they market it towards enterprises they market it towards developers which is not going to gain a lot of traction mm -hmm. community side but that's that's the right decision and that's what's going to bring the most important people to the network will then turn their experience and knowledge into real value on the network in the long term. So HBAR is going to the moon, but the moon is has all kinds of different meanings. Yeah. And I think that uh, people are going to be pleasantly surprised when it actually gets there. And over time, seeing what kind of uh, different use cases and applications are possible on Hedera network, mm. we'll see the value and my goal is to kind of give them more insight into all the news that are coming out. So, so they have a better understanding of what, what this network is and what to expect from the network in the short term and long term. Fantastic. Fantastic. Andy, I'm so gutted because we're running up on time, but the good news is it means you're going to have to come back. And there's <laughs> one piece of news that I'd love to talk to you about before you leave, just because it's super relevant um so much so i think it was released maybe two days ago and that's about the point you were talking about right about how getting to the moon requires builders and that may not mean that we're pumping loads of money into marketing it means that we're getting people to build this rocket ship um and that was that hedera announced that they will be sending an awful lot of h bar over to swells to pay for the expenses of building what they're building right and now immediate reaction from the community understandably was what's happening to the price of h bar right because if they're going to be selling one to two billion um h bar which i think equated to multi-millions in us yeah. dollar value everyone's like oh, the price is going to go down the price is going to go down now that would be a calculated guess however andy what's your opinions on seeing that news did you know about that news 
Oh yeah, of course. Um, <laughs> of course. I don't want to assume. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, I'm not even surprised uh, seeing that. Uh, I knew something like that is going to happen. And that, that was happening even before. Yeah. Um, so last year, um, Hedera kind of uh, changed its organization. And Swirls Labs used to be part of Hedera and all the Swirls, Swirls Labs employees, developers, Lehman, even Lehman Baird and Mans Harmon mm -hmm. were part of Hedera. So they were getting paid from the treasury for the work they're doing for the uh, for building out the network. Yeah. Now, when they decided to decentralize things and they created the HR Foundation, which got its own uh, portion from the treasury to yeah. give grants to the ecosystem projects, same thing happened to Swirls Labs. Now it's a separate entity. It's on its own. All the de developers moved from Hedera to Swirls Labs and they somehow need to uh, su uh, sustain their developments. And we need the network to evolve and we need uh, the network services to evolve and the foundation to get stronger, get ready for that scale that's coming to the network. And that mm -hmm. needs to be funded somehow. Okay. Now, the old, there is 50 billion HBAR tokens uh, total. And those HBARs also need to be distributed over time to the community, to the ecosystem, to everyone involved. So the, uh, the, the HBARs get distributed and that helps with the security of the network. What better way to distribute these HBARs than give it to Swirls Labs, who will then spend it on developing the ecosystem, bringing on more projects, uh, building out, out new services, mm -hmm. which will, will then bring more developers and more projects onto the network. And it, it becomes a complete uh, positive feedback loop of mm -hmm create new services, make the network more performant and more efficient and bring in more developers who will bring then build more applications and use cases. And at some point in, in the future, when there is enough applications running the network services and all those fees are going back to the network, the network becomes self-sustainable and then actually starts making profit. Mm. And some of that money th then can flow into Swirls Labs instead of H bars from the treasury going to the Swirls Labs. So these are things that in the short term, of course, it's going to seem painful uh, for investors. But when you're investing in the company, let's say a traditional company, mm. giving them money, you know that money is going to be burned to turn into real value. You know that two to three, let's say you put 100,000 into an idea or a project, traditional company, you know mm. they are going to spend that money to build out the company and the products that then is going to go to the market and scale and bring the value back to the investors and to the network and to the company and to the founders. Mm. So I see this, the natural uh, move. I, uh, I, I couldn't think of other way they could handle this. And I'm just really happy that they're open and transparent about this. They're letting the community know that some of the H bars are going to Swirls Labs and this is not going to be um, immediately dumping on the net uh, on on the market. Uh, they get the the H bars, and over time, uh, month to month, they spend sell it and spend it on the developments. And some of the H bars might not even be sold; they just uh, give it to their employees as a salary, for example. And a lot of their employees might not even sell those H bars. So. Um, it that doesn't seem to me that all these H bars are going to be dumped on the market the way it's being represented by some people who panic and cr uh, try to create some drama. And outside of the Hedera ecosystem, there is also some interest for some people, I guess, to create this drama and start attacking the network, uh, start uh, like using this situation as a way to put down the network's name and we need to be cognizant of all those things happening. Uh, but I, I wouldn't be worried. This is a positive news for, uh, for Hedera and it's going to continue building uh, a strong foundation for the network and uh, bring in even more use cases and applications to the network. It sure is. Thank you, Andy. So articulately put um, something which you can't even summarize in a couple of tweets that actually Hearing that and seeing you on camera say that, 
um, I feel it's going to resonate with a lot of people um, and also calm them as well. So, and then, hey, if it doesn't, hey, we, we tried our best. <laughs> yeah. Look, Andy, um, you, you did this to yourself. You're going to have to come back now and answer the second question. Is that okay? Oh, definitely. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Why well, be on it? And the answers. Oh, sorry, you going to say something? No, we'd love to come back in the future. Thank you, Sam. What's nice is we'll probably speak to you in a month or two months' time where you'll have some updates, of course, about Citadel Wallet. So um, I think it'll be well-timed. I think it'll be well-timed. Yeah, the next couple of months, there's a lot of exciting things coming. Uh, we'll actually see the hardware wallet. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll start sharing some images of the hardware wallet itself. We have it. We've been testing it. But I want to wait until we're ready to show it to, to the community and uh, their uh, ecosystem. But it's all coming. I would definitely love to come back and maybe even show the wallet uh, th through your show to, to the community. Should should be That'd be remarkable honor, seriously, Andy. And as always on this show, when we get to this part of the segment, I love to give you, our guests, the opportunity to let everyone know one last thing you'd like them to remember. That may be, hey, go follow you, HBud to the moon. That may be, how they can get involved with the project, but this is your chance. What would you like everyone to be watching right now to remember? Uh, there's there's so many things to look out for. I would just say, uh, watch out for the noise. Uh, there's a lot of noise in the industry. Even now, when there is a bear market, there's still a lot of noise uh, in this industry. So be careful of, uh, uh, be mindful of what the hype is, what the signal is, what the actual value is, which networks are trying to build things that are going to bring value uh, to the world and solve real world problems, and which networks are focused on uh, just creating hype around their project, um, spending a lot of money on marketing and promotions and uh, influencers. Uh, just be mindful of that because this industry hasn't reached to the point where you can uh, confidently say that uh, all uh, most of the projects involved have the, the right intentions and the right goals. Uh, so um, unfortunately, a lot of people are still going to be hurt. And I see every day some network crashing, some um, uh, project uh, uh, failing, and a lot of people are mo uh, losing a lot of money. Uh, and, and it actually hurts me seeing that being in the in the industry all the time. And I would say, just be mindful of those things. Take the lessons. It's okay to fail, uh, but the, when you fail, at least learn something from it and carry forward, um, following the right projects, the right networks, the right people, uh, so it doesn't happen again. Uh, that that's what I would say at this point. They always say that it's not a mistake if you learn from it. Right. And uh, hopefully that's resonated with at least one person today. So um, thank you for that reminder, Andy. Uh, thank you for everything on this. <laughs> I always say selfishly, I ask questions that I want to know, and it just turns out that someone's listening. So um, I appreciate you, sir. Yeah, th thanks a lot for having me. It, it was a pleasure talking to you. I know this has been a long time coming, but I'm really happy to be doing this interview with with you and looking forward to doing more in the future. I appreciate you, King. Well, it goes without saying, you need to get back to building the future of custodianship. Um, we're going to catch up afterwards, but for everyone at home, thank you so much. We hope to see you next week because we have more incredible minds like Candy joining us. And with that being said, we'll see you when we see you. Ciao for now. Bye.